and I think there are no questions to his um, to him being actually a brilliant commander, right? So this is why what we can do right now only to trust him and from our side to make sure that we get to our country as many weapons and munitions and supplies as possible. So he will have um, something to arm our soldiers with. Mm. President Biden has been defending his decision to give cluster weapons to Ukraine despite calls for a worldwide ban because of the risk they pose to civilians. The president said it had taken him a while to be convinced to do it, but he's acted because the Ukrainians are running out of ammunition. Kira Ruddick is a Ukrainian MP and the leader of the Holos party. Kira, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to speak to you, Kira. I want to start just with uh, this text message from one of our listeners saying cluster munitions means the moral high ground is lost. Do you agree with that? No, I cannot agree with that. Because you see, the cluster munitions issue is uh, that uh, many of the bomblets do not um, explode um, after they were fired. And uh, the issue is with the rate. So the cluster munitions that Russians are using against us have the uh, unexplosiveness rate as 40%. So basically like around a half, right? And uh, the ones that we requested from the United States uh, have the unexplosives rate less than 2%. And they have proven to be very effective and something that our military commanders requested. So here we say that uh, we will have to demand the territories um, each, uh, each way. So this is why um, it is critical that we will receive the ammunition ASAP. We need everything that we can get for this uh, counteroffensive that is running so we can regain as much territories as possible and liberate our people. Um, we understand that um, there are questions about that, but we also trust our allies that uh, the munition that they will give us will um, will be as effective and as safe as it is technically possible. Mm. You mentioned the counteroffensive. It is a month since the counteroffensive began. The US warned that uh, Ukraine is running out of ammunition. How would you assess the progress of the counteroffensive so far? We can only assess it with the way that our military commanders are reporting, and they say it is steady. The um, issue that we have warned the world about was that uh, during the last winter, Russians were able to create really strong defense um, uh, defense sets on the ground, and uh, our goal is to lose um, as small amount of people as possible and make sure that we are not using people as a battlefield meat. This is the huge difference between us and Russians. And honestly, the, the most critical difference between the democracy and authoritarian regime is that in democracy, human's life is the most expensive value in authoritarian regime is the cheapest one. So uh, our military commanders are um, using uh, their all their efforts to make sure that we preserve as many lives as possible. This is why we uh, are seeing um, uh, like very small amount of news right now. But I want to remind you the way the counteroffensive was going last year. Uh, it was a lot of under the hood for first couple of months. And then we have started seeing uh, liberated Kherson and liberated Kharkiv region. So this is what our hope is this year. By the way, today is uh, our General Zaluzhny's 50th um, year uh, birthday. Mm. And uh, we are all excited that he's running the uh, army the way he does. And I think there are no questions to his um, to him being actually a brilliant commander, right? So this is why what we can do right now only to trust him and from our side to make sure that we get to our country as many weapons and munitions and supplies as possible so he will have um, something to arm our soldiers with. Mm. In terms of the Russian uh, resistance, I suppose, there has been an acknowledgement as well that Russian forces are, are, are putting up quite stiff resistance um, in, in some parts of Ukraine, certainly. Uh, did you notice that with the, uh, well, sort of attempt at a coup a couple of weeks ago by Prigozhin in Russia, that that presented an opportunity in Ukraine for Ukraine to perhaps make uh, advances more rapidly? 
Yeah, well, we hoped that that would have um, at least a moral um, and uh, motivation take on Russian soldiers um, because they would uh, like start asking more and more questions on what they are fighting for and uh, are they will like are they fighting for the right side and if uh, at some point they will not be accused of treason, etc., etc. But as of right now, we cannot actually see the result again because our military command. Uh, say when we ask them, they say that we will um, they, we will only know that at a later time. So again, uh, when we are looking at this counteroffensive, we need to acknowledge that Russians had like really long time to build um, their defense systems, uh, to um, actually set up all the trenches um, and um, create uh, like pretty pretty stiff set of um, defense. And uh, when we are talking about military operations, um, the side that is going on offensive, and this is what, where we are, uh, always has a tougher time and um, has a higher chances of losing people. And I cannot again uh, amplify it more that our goal is to make sure that we are fighting for every person, for uh, every human's life, and uh, that we are not losing people for nothing. Kira, it's always good to speak to you. We're grateful for your time. Thank you. Thank you. That is Kira Ruddick, who is a Ukrainian MP and leader of the Holos Party. Yeah, we've had.